You know, one of the, uh, one of the good things about sports is uh, um, we, we celebrate wins. And, uh, and it doesn't matter if that win is by one point or 30 points. We're going to celebrate every victory we get. Uh, tonight was one of those victories, and, and we're excited about it. Um, we were playing against a very aggressive and scrappy Mississippi Valley State team. Anytime you have a, a team from your same state that uh, comes in, it's, it's going to be uh, an extra motivating factor for that team. I thought that Mississippi Valley State uh, prepared really well, had a good game plan. Uh, I thought they were aggressive, and uh, I don't think they were intimidated at all. So uh, they came out with a lot of fire, and it showed in the, uh, in the competition as the game went along. They had several chances to, uh, to quit. We got up by 15. And, uh, and they continue to fight and battle, and, and that's a great testament to, to their uh, staff and their players. Um, as far as our game goes, we set several goals for the game. Uh, I think we had six goals that we set. We accomplished four of those goals, and so that's progress moving in the right direction. Um, the, the ones that we accomplished included uh, we wanted to get 20-plus offensive rebounds. Uh, we wanted to have a rebounding margin that was at least 15 in our favor. Um, we wanted to keep our opponent at 60 or less points. Um, cut that one pretty close. Uh, but, uh, but again, those are some of the goals that we set. Uh, we also wanted to uh, keep our team fouls at 15 or less and uh, limit the number of free throws we gave up. So there were several things that I thought we, we accomplished as far as uh, taking steps in the right direction. Um, again, I, I, I just keep talking. I'm sorry. But uh, we... Uh, we also set a, a new tone this week uh, coming back from Thanksgiving. We felt like as a team, in order to be successful, one of the things that we had to uh, alter a little bit was uh, a defensive mindset that, um, that was less based on gambling and more based on containment and contesting. So we really wanted to focus uh, this week on staying in between our girl and the basket and having a hand up and, and contesting every shot by our opponent. So I thought, uh, I thought that was a, a great... Um, a great performance for us for, the, for having worked on it for about two days. I thought that they really communicated much better and, uh, and really kind of bought into the, the mindset of we're not going to gamble, we're not going to get beat, and we're going to force teams to shoot over us and make baskets. So I was proud of them for that. And I'll open it up to you guys now. Let's talk about the last 10 seconds. Kind of what was your view of what was kind of going on there? At the um, you know, we, we, uh, we knew that they were going to, well, we had an idea of what we drew up in the huddle that they were going to do was to, to set the uh, baseline screen and then have a diagonal screen coming up for a three-point shot, which is what they actually ran. And, uh, and even in the midst of drawing it up and knowing what was going to happen, we still were a little slow getting our, our hand up in their face. So uh, we were fortunate that the shot didn't go in. Um, we were fortunate that um, Kenyatta secured the rebound and the time ran off the clock because they were on a roll right then. And... Um, you know, I, I have all the confidence in the world we, we would have continued to uh, win through an overtime. You know, you don't want to go to overtime at home. You just want to go ahead and knock it out at the, at the end of the 40 minutes and go on to the next one. You were able to push a lead out to, like you said, I think 15 points or so. Right. They were able to kind of hang around. What were they doing to kind of get back in, especially there at the end? You know, I, I think really what happened is uh, we had a little stretch at, uh, at, the, at the nine minute mark, I think it was. Um, where we had gotten up by 15, we, uh, we fouled them on a shot that was an and one. Um, we gave up a, an uncontested three-pointer in transition and then, uh, and then gave up one more additional offensive rebound in, in a three, possession, uh, three consecutive possessions. And that combined with two turnovers on, on our side offensively, I think really, um, really got them going, inspired them, got them motivated, uh, took, took, uh, took their confidence to another level. And, uh, and then again, you've got your game going from 15 to 8 in about 50 seconds. And, uh, and I think that was a huge turning point for them. I think you all started 3 for 13 or so to start the game. Was yeah. that just kind of a little shaking off the rust, I guess, with you know, the long layover? I, I think it was a little bit. I think it's a little bit shaking off the rust. I, I think it's a little bit I th that we, uh, we took early shots in the shot clock at the beginning of the game. I think we could have gotten better looks, but we were, uh, we were eager to throw it up there at the first, first open look. And, uh, and sometimes we, we have to get to the uh, mindset and understand that if our shots aren't falling, it's more important to get to the rim and, uh, and make a layup, make a free throw, you know, make something that you know you're going to make. And, uh, and then again, go back to taking some shots that, that you're more comfortable with on the perimeter. So I, I think we just took too many, uh, many three-pointers initially right out, the, right out the gate. And uh, again, that's when we should have been attacking. And we let them settle into a rhythm defensively. And, and that's something you don't want to do. 
Uh, couldn't really get the outside shot going tonight, but uh, you attacked the basket well. Is that kind of going forward? Is that what you, you're looking to do on the offensive end? Yeah, absolutely. And, and our, whole, uh, our whole, whole offense is, is predicated on attacking the rim first, uh, shooting three second. What we, what we say is uh, we, uh, we, we like three pointers, we love layups. And that's kind of our mantra. Um, tonight, it, uh, it seemed like we were, we were really loving on some three-pointers, and they weren't going, on, going in. But, uh, but yeah, we, we've got to get an attacking mentality and, uh, and get to the rim first. And then, like I said, uh, whether it be drawing fouls and shooting free throws or um, you know, making some, some layups, we need, to, we need to have that mentality first. And the threes will, the threes will open up and, and fall when, when you've established your attacking game. And uh, what will you look to do? You know, two games this week, so close. Uh, what will you look to for your team to how, the, how do they, how do you want them to respond? You know, um, again, tomorrow we just have to come in with an intensity and stay focused on on the things at hand. We uh, we spent a lot of time in the last couple of weeks preparing for this week, in the sense that you know we've talked about finals are coming up. We've talked about having three games, you know, in, in a calendar week: Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and and one of them being our first true road trip, uh, road trip, road competition. So. Um, we've tried to get them mentally prepared. We've talked about uh, taking care of themselves, you know, remaining hydrated, um, really coming up with a mindset that this three-game stretch was coming up. And um, again, I think I think they're ready to bounce back. They're they're going to come in tomorrow. Um, it's it's funny. Uh, they they had a look of hurt on their face after a win. And uh, like I said, we're going to celebrate every victory. And so I, I appreciate their concern that they didn't play as well as they could have. But uh, but again, we're going to celebrate tonight's win and, and come back tomorrow and uh, have the same energy and focus that we've had the last two days. You talked, I guess it was last Monday, about wanting Valencia to maybe drive to the basket a little more. I feel like she kind of did that today. It took her a little while to get going and ended up with, I think, 12 points or so. Yeah, yeah. Um, people keep telling me that she could play, and I wasn't, I wasn't real sure. But um, <laughs> now I'm giving her a hard time. Uh, yeah, V's, V's obviously a, a very capable player. And uh, she's got the unique ability to really take over a game. Um, it's something that she can do due to her speed, her size, um, her ball handling ability, her defensive pressure. There's so many different ways that Valencia can affect the game. And I thought that uh, tonight, when we did get to that 15-point stretch, I, I thought a huge part of it was Valencia taking over the game. And, uh, and again, we, we've not said that Valencia needs to score X amount of points or you know, any certain number of rebounds, assists. but. She has to guarantee us some, some wins. And I thought tonight she really took over the game at a critical stretch and uh, expanded that lead to 15 during a very important time. Took you, I guess, about 14 minutes or so to get on the scoreboard. Just kind of what they were giving you, trying to set up some teammates? What? Well, I was on the bench. And Coach T had a long <laughs> talk with me about it. And she really chewed me out. And then I just went out there and did what I had to do. Long talk about what, what were they wanting you to do to change? Play my game. I wasn't giving my all. They wanted me to do that. And uh, some nights this year, you, you, you've been more than a distributor and guaranteed wins. Uh, what Coming into a night, what you see early on or, or whenever you may, what, what sets off in your mind, hey, tonight I need to score, tonight I need to do this? What, what do you see? Um, I just take whatever the defense gives me. Um, if they're playing me, um, they give me the drive, I take it. And if I can distribute to my teammates, then that's what I do. Danielle McCray had her first double-double, I think. Yeah, you know, um, it, it's, it's, uh, it's neat. We, uh, we actually anticipated as a staff, we thought, we thought a good number for Danielle was eight and eight. We really thought she could get eight points and eight rebounds a game. And, uh, and you know, this was, uh, this was her first night to, to not start the game. I don't know if that's a factor or not. Um, that's something that she and I will talk about, you know, sometime tomorrow, and and see if that made her uh, feel more comfortable. But I, I thought that she had a a greater sense of urgency tonight. I thought that um, defensively on the board she was phenomenal. Offensively, uh, and, and it's not this way with just Danielle's with everyone. When they remembered to go crash, you know, uh, came up with the offensive rebound a lot of times. So uh, I think Danielle's one that that by the end of the year could have anywhere from five to ten double doubles, and and. She's a major, a major factor for us moving forward. Valencia, I guess, to kind of add to that, what, what kind of an asset is Danielle when she's doing everything within her ability? Um, she's really like an X factor because she doesn't do anything outside of herself. She just plays her game, and whatever she brings, she brings it. I noticed, uh, I think Tia was in street clothes <laughs> before the game. Mm -hmm. 
Um, you know, uh, I, I think uh, it was more precautionary than anything. 